It's not uncommon on social media to be met with some strange understandings of topics that are pretty well rounded. And not just topics, but concepts, phrases, and, and all sorts. Now, folks can make mistakes. In fact, we all make mistakes, and that's fine if we learn from them. But instead of realizing and learning from those mistakes, many tend to double down and dig their heels in and get things even more wrong. Today, we're going to be discussing the topic of false dichotomy, what it is, how it ought to be used, and we're going to be discussing an example of it being used incredibly incorrectly from a number of different angles. As this is a new article series, I figured it'd be worth spending some time going over what actually inspired it. In December of 2022, I ran a poll in a selection of Facebook groups, on Twitter, and on YouTube as well. The results were actually surprising, but also quite positive in general. But what was amusing was some of the conversation that happened under these polls. I ended up sharing some of these takes that were just outright nutty and others were incredibly wrong and I posted a few of the conversations on Twitter till my friend Per said I love how this saga of Joe debating absolute teaspoons on FB is equal measures of hilarious grey hair inducing and infuriating now with some of these bad takes I felt it important to provide sort of as bite-sized information as possible. However, I never actually got round to addressing it until the other day when someone on our comment section achieved the rank of what I thought was an absolute teaspoon and inspired me to address these bad points and thus the article series and videos were then born uh, out of this inspiration for, right, I need to address some of these bad takes because they scratch at the back of my mind and they're really annoying me and I just want to get it out there, say my piece, and then I'm done. The poll isn't going to be relevant to all in this series. However, I felt it worth addressing the poll and going over it in brief as the first few videos in this series will relate to them. As I'm sure you're aware, I'm an atheist, and I prefer the propositional use of atheism, and an atheist is one that believes gods do not exist. However, I understand there are various uses of atheism, and if someone identifies as atheist but doesn't use my use, it doesn't really matter as long as I know what they mean. Although, yes, I would prefer it if we were all speaking the same English, but that's another matter entirely. Now, whilst the lack of belief definition might not be the most common in philosophy, literature, in media, in most places around the world, when you are online, when you are in these debate groups or on Twitter, the lack of belief definition of atheism does seem to be the most common one used, at least among those, the most loudest in the debate groups. It's also used in certain circles, for example, secular or atheistic activism often use this lack of belief definition, and that is sort of to, to try and encapsulate all non-theists under one heading rather than separate. Could use non-theists and secular rather than trying to get them under the banner of atheists, but that's neither here nor there. They're doing their thing, and in a lot of cases they are doing some good work, so label doesn't really matter. Regardless of the preference of definition, I addressed atheists and I used it in a way that was just sort of trying to find out what they think of gods. I did say in there that not only what do you think about gods, but the theistic aspects of theistic religions, which is what I was trying to get them to infer from there was like claims of miracles and some form of supernatural thing that could be linked back to a deity you know is there any plausibility to that in some way shape or form even if they thought that maybe there wasn't a god now the poll had some problems and one of those problems is that some of the social media outlets only allowed four or five poll choices so 
I decided to limit it to four atheist choices. And if there was a fifth option available, it was for a theist to click, you know, see results because they were interested in what the end result of the poll is. The next was probably the length of the choices. There's only so much text you can fit into those little lines. You sort of, you're trying to capture a position that captures positions sort of in a, in a, in a bubble, a general positions like all of these ones could fit under this, all of these ones could fit under this and so on and so forth. And I can understand why that could be problematic. Some of the comments that you ended up getting were actually, well, this is the way I see it. And you're like, that's exactly what that is. It's just worded slightly differently. People are almost stuck in a particular way they see their position that they don't realize that if you say it this way, it's the same as this. They're just said two different ways. Now, what I, what I did actually do on the poll was I gave uh, a bit more information underneath the poll describing the choices. But the poll reads as follows. As an atheist, which statement best represents your position about gods and theistic aspects of theistic religions, not the other parts that might hold some truth? For clarity, when I say unsure below, it means you don't think they are true, but you don't think they are false, also known as suspending judgment. I've limited this to four atheist choices due to collecting data from other social media outlets that impose this limitation. I hope to do a more detailed poll in the future based around the collective results. The options were all are false, mostly false, rest unsure, Christianity false, rest unsure, unsure about all, theist, see results. So now another issue that you have when you're doing polls and posts and things like that around social media is if you put too much detail in the original post, people just ignore it. You need to keep it as concise as possible. And I felt like even that was a little bit long. There was a chance that people were just going to ignore it. But I did put in explanations. What I had expected people to infer from what I'd stated was this. If it was all our faults, the option implies that you believe no gods exist and all theistic claims are false as well. Mostly false rest unsure. So this option implies the voter believes that most gods do not exist, but there is at least one deity that they are unsure about. You know, they haven't concluded they definitely don't exist yet. When I say definitely don't, I'm not even saying like 100% they definitely don't exist. I'm talking about they're, they're not even leaning that way to they probably don't exist. Christianity false, the rest unsure. Now, the implication here is that they've concluded that Christianity is false and the rest of them they haven't really looked into, they are unsure about these, they haven't concluded one way or the other if any of these other gods exist. Now, with this, perhaps it should have been Abrahamic faiths false. There wasn't enough space when I put in the questions. So when it came to it, it was just like, yeah, you know what? Christianity is the one that is probably the biggest religion discussed among English speaking people on the internet and in these debate groups. And most of the atheists I speak to who have come out of religion from America, this is, tend to have come from a Christian background and that they are now atheists because of this. So they might believe Christianity is definitely false, but they might not have looked into any other form of theism or religion at all. So I figured that was a pretty safe choice to put in there. But yes, you could expand that and vote that if it was also Islam, for example, and you could have that same sort of choice there because the idea was like best represents, you know, what describes your position closest. You know, it's not like this is definitely what I think, but this is the, the, the closest to how you'd see it. And the idea was hopefully exploring some of these in the future. And then unsure about all? Well, this would imply that the voter has not concluded that any gods do or don't exist. This is usually represented by the suspense of judgment position, but it could be for other reasons like agnosticism or apatheism. So the request was to vote on what best represents your position. In other words, 
the closest approximation to what you think about gods. So responses coming in, some people are engaging, some people are clarifying, you know, what is actually meant by things. A lot of the conversation underneath was, was positive. But, you know, there's always a few who jump in arm swinging. And this particular person jumped in saying, regarding the OP, nothing beats some good old-fashioned false dichotomy. And when someone starts a conversation like this, it's often the case that nothing positive will come from it. However, I try to be unbiased in these conversations and treat everyone equally and as someone who I can have a conversation with. I'm not saying I'm not, I, I'm, I am unbiased. I mean, people can say things that get my back up. I can be having a bad day. I can respond poorly. I'm just saying, like, I try. <laughs> I try not to go in there arm swinging even when someone responds like that. So I responded asking, you know, what false dichotomy and how does that relate to the four positions I provided? And unfortunately, my question about that was, well, ignored. And he said, really like to think you know what a false dichotomy is. And obviously there were others chiming in that did realize that they were perhaps off base. So. I think we should cover off what a false dichotomy actually is. We should start by separating those words in themselves. So, what is false? Well, that is something that is untrue, and in most forms of logic and objective reality out of some man-made systems, it's completely binary. You know, something is true or false. Something might not be known to be true or false yet, but that thing will still be either true or false. So if something that is true is, is what is, something false is what isn't. Now, there are various theories of truth here that you could go through, but I think that we tend to understand it in at, at least a very simplistic fashion of, you know, something that is and something that isn't. If you're interested in the various theories of truth, there's a wealth of information out there, and uh, there is a post on Answers in Reason where I start exploring them and how they relate to morality, which I'll drop a link to if I remember. <laughs> so next we have to cover off what a dichotomy is. The word dichotomy is used in a variety of areas, but it is simply that of two choices or actions or dividing parts. Your light switch, for example, may have a dimmer, but it is dichotomous because it is on or off. So true and false in itself is a dichotomy as well, something that is true or false. You either own a dog or you don't own a dog. This isn't talking about, well, I owned a dog once. Right now, at this present time, you either own a dog or you do not own a dog. God either exists or does not exist. The false dichotomy is an informal fallacy where two options are presented as if they are the only options. This limitation of options doesn't necessarily have to be done intentionally. The person presenting them might not be aware of these other options options. However, the limitation does lead to a faulty premise, which in turn can lead to a faulty conclusion. So if we were to think about it in a syllogistic way, I cannot find my glasses. They were either stolen or I didn't have them today. I had them today, therefore they were stolen. We can think about it in the way that we present a question as well. For example, if I was to say to you, what is your favorite color, red or blue? That would be a false dichotomy because I'm assuming that one of those two is your favorite color and they are the only ones allowed to be your favorite color. However, if that question is altered slightly and I say, which color do you prefer, red or blue? This means that I'm asking it in a relativistic way. And you might even come back and say, well, I feel about the same about. It. I'm not saying there aren't other colors, you know, but. It's just looking for a preference, and it is a relativistic rather than a you must A or B sort of thing. So was the poll a false dichotomy? The poll presented four options. So was it a dichotomy? 
No. However, the false dichotomy can also be referred to as a false dilemma, and whilst the dilemma typically means a choice between two equally undesirable actions, it can sometimes colloquially be used more broadly. For example, instead of separating dilemma, trilemma, quadrilemma, and so on, they can be used as the same thing. So if we address the false dichotomy statement in a more charitable way and rephrase it as, was the pole a false quadrilemma? The poll doesn't state that these are the only options. In fact, it just asks what best represents your position. If I asked which country was closest to the one that you live in, Australia, Austria, Antarctica, or Afghanistan, this isn't a false quadrilemma. As again, it's not saying that you have to live in one of those countries or one of those countries is the one that is next to you. It is just one of relative distance to where you actually live. So like the relative distance between the countries and your location, or the relative preference between red and blue, the poll asked about these options and which is closest to where you sit, essentially. So of these options here, which one are you closest to? It also explained the reason for the limitation of these choices and said that, you know, once we got the answers, I was going to explore more into these specific bubbles. So, to summarize, nope, it wasn't a false quadrilemma. Explaining this to them didn't go down well at all. In his response to his, I'd like to think you know what a false dichotomy is, I first tried explaining how I use four options, not two. And I used the color example that I've just explained to him as well. And his response was, well, <laughs> he says, Joe, it doesn't matter whether you provided four, two, eight, or a hundred. One who's familiar with the concept of false dichotomy would know this. At the end of the day, you're trying to shoehorn people into picking. You can say which is closer if you like, but you're still trying to get people to pick answers that don't at all hit the mark. Now, had you set the poll to allow others to add options, you'd have been fine, but you didn't, did you? I mean, the reason I didn't add the option for people adding their own things is because, as per a lot of the comments and some of the ones I will address in the future, they answered using different words for one of the options that they could have picked because it would have fitted in them. And again, it was which is the closest, and then we were going to explore how they would describe that later. So he then throws in another one saying, don't let this sort of thing get you upset. I hope you had fun with your poll, though. And I just questioned, you know, what do you think a dichotomy is? Um, and to the end of the conversation, he never actually even provided what a dichotomy is. I tried to explain the locations thing with him, you know, which country is the closest, and how he would then turn around and be like, oh, well, that's a false dichotomy. It's like, no, that's not how it works, and so on. And he then just failed to give any sort of rational response, saying that, yeah, you're not going to rescue yourself with this shit. Nice try, though. And I did turn around and say, that's some pretty amazing projection going on there. That's not going to work either. And still not having any answer on what a dichotomy was or any other answer, Dave chimed in, saying, uh, in response to his, one who's familiar with the concept of false dichotomy would know this, saying that, I hope you're not including yourself as one who's familiar with the concept of the false dichotomy, as it's pretty clear from your responses here that you're not. <laughs> and he didn't come back after that. Now, I'll admit that perhaps my OP could have been worded a bit better. In fact, in future posts on Facebook, I did take some of the learnings from as I was posting in each group and just trying to rephrase the OP in a way that would help people understand things a little bit better and try and take out some of the bias from the responses where they're like, this is the way I see things, just to try and mitigate sort of problems like this. Though, equally, there were places like on YouTube where I didn't get the same sort of aggro from the responses, so it is interesting how people do respond to this sort of thing in different ways. But yeah, it wasn't a perfect poll. In fact, I think with the internet, you're never going to have a perfect poll. What you can do is provide the best you can and hope it works well from there.
Whether you watched the video or you um, read the article, I'm sure you might be thinking, well, actually, you could have just explained what a false dichotomy is and how it is sometimes used incorrectly. So why the conversation recap? I even blanked out the name. There's no name and shame or anything like that, uh, even if I do refer to them as an absolute teaspoon. So what's the purpose? I personally find real world examples useful. Even if names are altered to protect the idiots, what I've offered here is someone jumping in, arms swinging wildly, and even when I pointed out to them that perhaps using the terminology this way was incorrect, they doubled down. So we had two lessons here. The first is what a false economy is, and the second is how to not act like an absolute teaspoon. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do prefer these longer form ones where I go into a bit of detail, then either the articles or Absolute Teaspoons playlist is definitely going to be for you. However, I will also be doing shorts versions of these, which will be hopefully under 60 seconds, just explaining a quick overview of how it's run. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we will catch you soon.